Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 27th of July 2020. Um, I'm picking Brain, I will be your host. We're going to go through our high priority initiatives, our other initiatives, have Q&A, design review, proposals, parking lot, that kind of thing. Uh, super good. So kicking off the uh, high priority initiatives is um, upcoming and ship releases. Did anybody ship anything? No. Uh, so I'm gonna add, we do have a tracking issue for go IPFS 0.7. Um, I will add that. But that is not slated to release till later in August. Cool. Um, I'm hoping to release uh, 49 of JS IPFS uh, later this week. That will contain um, Arachli's work on a shared uh, IPFS node between tabs. It will include um, new uh, the new pinning um, refactor, so pins stored in the data store, which will be lightning fast for adding um, and a host of other small bug fixes. So yeah, hopefully that will be out by the end of the week. Um, so moving on to the next high priority initiative is the pinning services. Please do you have an update. Yeah. So we've got the issue stubbed out for that. Uh, the spec is pretty much done. There might be some small tweaks along the way. Um, I think there's a created um, time issue there, um, a timestamp for created. Uh, I need to look at that and review that. Um, but other than that, that work should be ready to start. I think we'll likely wrap up the ED key work um, and then move on to, to that. Awesome. Um, is there any further update on the ED25519 keys? Yes. Uh, there we were. Well, words. Um, there was an issue. We were or currently, sorry, brain. Sharna's tests are fixed. Um, now we're looking at the uh, Patar uh, PR open for finishing up the uh, IIP NIST keys as base36 by default. Um, there was some nice to haves that I think Adin was looking at in terms of um, pure ideas, base 36 CIDs. Um, Adin, did you want to talk about that? Yeah, I think we're likely going to leave the pure IDs as being emitted as base 58 multi hashes by default, but we definitely need to make go multi adder parse base 36 or parse CIDs. Um, so yeah, just so that we can do this in the future with, with less problems. Radical. Uh, the next one is Sekai removal. Yeah, so we're currently working on planning the removal of Sekaio. Um This is a long time coming. Uh, Sekaio was never meant to be a permanent thing. Um, now that Libby noise support is out, we're going to look at um, setting a timeline for rolling out the removal in Go IPFS. Tentatively, we're targeting 0.7 for that. Um, and then we're currently evaluating this week, looking at what PL infrastructure we have up, um, and then kind of the rollout of that SecIO removal. We're also trying to be cognizant of, um, especially things like JS IPFS, like upgrading because only 0.47 has Lipidipa noise. We have the ability to add noise like backwards compatible down to like 041, I think, but really figuring out, making sure that we have the support there for the various implementations to allow, allow for that. So we're, we're gonna be working this week on um, communication of that, what the rollout plan looks like for that, and then trying to help support um, teams with upgrading either just updating configs, like for example, using orbit DB, like if you're gonna, right now, I think it's still on over 46. So in theory, you can just plug in LibbyDB noise to that version of IPFS, but making sure that there's a clear path for people to be able to do that. We wanna make sure that we, we have that support. So we're evaluating that this week. Are we gonna be able to um, pull out any of uh the P2P's crypto dependencies if we don't need Sekai anymore? Um, that is a good question. Maybe. Um, I'll have to look at that. 
you know, it'd be awesome if we could make the bundle smaller. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, next up, the Rust IPFS initiative. Lots of lots of activity here. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the big news is that DHT and content discovery is is working now. So we're one step closer to getting a bootstrap peer that can connect with the global swarm and get and send content. Um, we've already rewritten the Unix FS adding component, but uh, it's it's much better now. And um, the final little bit of fun is that uh, I spun up an Orbit DB node and tried to interface with Rust IPFS uh, via the HTTP APIs um, like you would a Go node. And it almost worked. Um, <laughs> I was expecting a lot of like HTTP errors and stuff, but we have over 150 passing conformance tests now uh, via the HTTP API. So it's, it's really close to being there. There's a couple of persistence issues to work out, but uh, we should have full compatibility there pretty soon too. It's exciting stuff. Thank you. That is awesome. Um, I've been looking into the uh, like the timeout stuff as well, um, trying to pull out the like default time. Like basically, what happens is when you pass a timeout argument to any API call, it sets the timeout on the client as well as the server. So I've been looking at pulling it out from the client. Um, nearly there with that, but it's still a little bit done. So, sorry, it's still a little bit that needs to be done to finish that off. Oh, awesome. Okay, I'll pass that along to the the gang. Cool. Thank you. Uh, next up is JS Lib P2P um, signed peer records and gossip sub v1.1. Hey, hey, yeah, so in the signed peer record side of things, the, the last PR that we had open uh, was the, for the certified address book. It is now merged. So in this side of the initiative, we have everything now uh, merged in the Lib P2P core, more precisely in the 0 0.29 branch that we will merge when we do the release. And uh, Gossip Sub 1.1 and Rendezvous working progress branches already are using this version. Um, and yeah, in the Gossip Sub 1.1 side of things, uh, basically the peer exchange PR, which included the signed peer records, was also merged in the branch for the 1.1. And Cayman is now currently working on more tests. He's basically inspired on the Go implementation tests and is guaranteeing that all the flows that Go is testing we are also testing in JS, uh, which I think it's a good call. Uh, so for closing this initiative, we basically need to close the work in progress stuff that we already have. There is this test and also uh, the, re the refactor of the base implementation of PubSub. And uh, with that, update uh, FloodSub and uh, go into the interop tests with Go. And yeah, that's pretty much about the sign peer records in Gossip Sub. Uh, for the improved uh, discoverability and connectivity in JS, uh, so the rendezvous work, it's mostly ready for review again. Uh, I did a PR to update the spec with the sign peer records. I also aligned with Jacob last week on how we should integrate uh, rendezvous. We will start by uh, using it as an external module and eventually as soon as we flush out better the, the API and we get feedback from the First users will eventually move it inside lipid to car, but for now we'll have it uh, outside. Uh, and yeah, the work is uh, ready for review, but I think it will not be a priority at the moment. I need to sync with Jacob, but maybe we'll wait for the 0 0.29 before uh, getting into it again. And yeah, so uh, I will also start working this week on the other piece of the this initiative, which will be the auto relay. And that's it from me. Just in regards to Gossip Sub, I don't know if you saw, but I guess there were some issues in like Rust um, that caused a problem with Go LibP2P. So Go LibP2P Pub Sub, like the message IDs that come across in the protobuf, um, those are strings. And I think like they were be Go is interpreting those as UTF-8, which is problematic because people are sending non-UTF-8 strings. Um, and so that creates issues on the go side of things. And so like the spec is updated now to just change message IDs over to bytes. Um, and so we'll likely need to look at, we should probably look at for gossip sub one one also just going in and figuring out like, okay, let's, let's do that conversion. I don't think it should be like too big of an issue in JS um, just because like we're not 
I think we're just using it um, for hashing, but we should we should check that out. There's an issue in um, JS Libby to be pub sub. I'll just link that in the chat and put it in the notes um, that references this issue um, that links to all of the the Go Go issues and the issues in Rust. So we should probably try to make sure that we're supporting that sooner rather than later for whenever Go actually switches over. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking into it today or tomorrow. I didn't uh, yet look into those issues uh, issues, but they are in my mailbox. So yeah, I'm certainly go through them. Radical. No more interpreting buffers as UTF-8 strings. Uh, that is it for the um, the high priority initiatives. Uh, any other initiatives? There is no update on the subdomain gateway. I can see. Pending Go FS 0.7 blog post and docs. I'm not going to ask you to do it any further update because there's no update. We already said it. Okay, cool. Um, Unix v 1.5 in Go IPFS. Um, because the update is Justice Node has appeared and is going to take on the um, implementation of Unix v 1.5 in Go IPFS. Um, he's spinning up by the looks of the issue. I will post a, a link. Um, moving on, the migration to multi hash keys in the block store that shipped um, in the last version of JSRVFS, so that can be closed and removed. Uh, pinning system revamp um, is, yeah, it's really close. I just want to take a final pass over um, garbage collection uh, around the depth property of the pins, but that should be just like an eyeball, well, writing lots of tests kind of operation. Um, it's small. Um, Super good to get that done. Uh, shared IPFS node um, is the next thing to talk about. Goes up. Okay, sorry, I'm muted. Um, yeah, it's landed. I'm very excited. Uh, thanks, Alex, for reviewing and landing. Um, so there will be more work happening on that. Uh, uh, namely, I'm. I've been mentioning in a couple of weeks ago, I think, idea of doing IPLD with replication. Uh, so I've been having conversations with textile team uh, to figure out how to proceed with that experiment. And I think we wanna move the IPFS light into the one of the protocol labs organization. Uh, I think I was suggested to do the IPFS org, but I need to figure out who can do the thing because I don't think I have a privileges myself. Um, and so part of the work would be try to make uh, this work compatible with IPFS Lite as well. So it can work with either IPFS. Um, so the next one is improving web file add. Uh, that is something that Alex took over and uh, landed the improvements to the JS IPFS. Uh, and I'm going to update the web UI pull request that I have there to take advantage of those. Obviously, we will have to wait for IPFS release to happen before we can pull it in, but I'll update pull request to just uh, pull from uh, GitHub and test it that way. Um, uh, so you should be able to just pull uh, the RC from NPM. You shouldn't need to use GitHub URLs for things. Like, so every oh, change to master has an RC published. So you should just be able to use like install IPFS at next and get the RC. Right, even better, thank you. Um, cool, that is it for the uh, other initiatives. Uh, do we have any design review proposals? Uh, blockers and asks. Questions? Yeah, uh, yeah, so I guess a few questions and, and one comment. Uh, the comment is that uh, someone in HackFS was trying to um, basically like just be a DHT server node and listen in on content that they hear about and then try to fetch the content as like a caching mechanism. But because GoIPFS has not yet done the multi-hash blockstore migration, 
this is like annoying because the DHT only stores multi hashes and you need to request CIDs, um, which means you sort of have to send multiple requests to get your data. So uh, there, are, there are multiple reasons to not punt on the GoIPFS multi hash thing indefinitely. Um, that was just the comment. Questions were. Uh, is it on the roadmap anywhere for JS IPFS to add the um, I, the IPNS over PubSub like uh, persistence changes that made it into Go IPFS a while ago, or is or is that not being tracked anywhere yet? Uh, good question, Nome Bashko. As far as I know, it's not being tracked anywhere. We okay. should open an issue. Okay, cool. Yeah, it makes sense. It's not, a, it's not a huge set of changes, and it only really makes a difference if there are... It's only, a, it's only a bad thing that it's not implemented if there's like Go and JS nodes that are both on the same pub subtopic, because then the properties are like unclear, because like some of the nodes are doing one thing and some are doing another thing. Um, okay. And I think that, oh, I guess one more was for pinning services. Um, I saw that we are, we would like to do the MFS based pinning thing um, where, you know, when you update your MFS, you update your pins at the pinning service. Uh, what happens with the pins that are, what happens with the previous pin? Um, how does how do you know when you can garbage collect it or the pinning service does? Does it just get deleted and it's the pinning services problem if they want to keep it around longer? Yeah, so um, in the pinning service API, there's an update and operation, which is sort of like a porcelain on top of remove old one and create totally new one, which reuses the same metadata. Um, and that's effectively what will happen. Uh, we leave it up to pinning service to decide when to garbage collect. Uh, the way this works is the moment you update uh, that pin, the all, you, you, you are no longer guaranteed that the old pin is provided. So if you change the pin to a different CID, you no longer can assume the data is uh, for the old CID is still around, but if you s just change metadata, like nothing changes effectively. Okay, so you would update it to have some sort of like decay, like don't store me indefinitely, store me for a week or something. Is that how, because how, what am I updating it to if not deleting it? Yeah, that's, the, that's a good question. So uh, the billing itself, it's not a part of the spec right now. Uh, there's an open PR to add a creation date, which could be used by pinning service to uh, reason or like create some like billing logic, but it's like not really part of the spec. It's not like when you pin something, you don't, uh, there are no uh, convention, at least not in the spec for, I want to pin this for a week. Uh, that could be something that pinning service uh, like they, each pinning service could have their own logic uh, to like override the default behavior. But the assumption is that like there will be a default behavior which user assigns to the API token, and uh, just use of that token would mean you want use those defaults. As I'm trying to understand, like what it would mean when I update to a, a new pin, so I want the new version to pin for sure and the old one maybe less so, how do I flag that? Do I flag that by a deletion or by something else? There's, like, there's just, you, you could either remove the old one and, or create new one or just use that single operation to modify existing pin. I okay. don't think there's any difference, whatever. I think for the okay. client that's easier to modify because that's like one request less. Well, I wasn't sure if we actually wanted to keep around the old data or if that was like a separate problem. No, like for this specific okay. uh, use case, when we have like web UI and you want to keep everything on the file screen, uh, we like constantly update the pin and we don't care about the old one. Okay. Right, thanks. 
I have a quick question about that um, that DHT stuff. Is there like a good reason why we're not putting CIDs in the DHT? In, yes. In putting the DHT? Okay, why? Because if I have the same piece of data that is stored as CIDV0 and CIDV1, then I will have to do two DHT puts and two DHT gets in order to guarantee that I find it. Yes, but, but like the, the, the problem that we're, I mean, yes, that sucks. And like, this is kind of a legacy of CIDV0 problem, but the, the multi-hash is not that useful. Like it's the difference between data and data structures. And if we're moving to a model in which we're not putting every single block into the DHT and we're just putting the pins in, then those multi-hashes don't really mean anything. Like they just say like, oh, I have the block for this root node. Um, you're not saying I have this graph because that doesn't mean the graph. Um, like you need the actual CID for that. There's like a really like huge drop in utility by shaving a couple bytes off of this. You're not, it's not shaving bytes, it's, it's saving many network round trips. So if we end up, mm -hmm. if slash when we end up making it so that you, you know, you're only going to put, uh, you know, maybe only the root nodes into the DHT and you're going to put them in not as these like sort of records where you just say CID data, but actually like a signed record with more information, then yeah, we can put CIDs potentially back in there. Maybe mm -hmm. we could even put the bytes in there twice and make the key, the multi hash and the value include the CID bits. Could, could we, so for the feature that we have right now, where instead of broadcasting everything, you just broadcast the pins. When we do that, could we just broadcast them twice? Cause then it's not a very big set. Yeah. But then all the getters need to get twice. Also. All the getters need to get twice. I'm not following that. Oh, so, sorry. Yes. All right. I can put twice. If everyone yeah. always puts twice, maybe that's okay. If also everyone is on the latest version. Right? <laughs> no, no. Well, well th this is only for the case when you're only putting the pin, the, the, the pin roots in though. Um, like that's b because then, you know, you're only looking at the DHT to establish that network and then get connected to a few. You're not like doing a ton of other lookups in the DHT for every block down the graph. So we wouldn't worry about a lot of round trips in that case. You actually actually end up with more than the, just the, t it's not, so <laughs> it's not just CIDV0 and CIDV1. It's only CIDV, because what if the codec changes? Like what happens if I just switch it to use like raw instead of DAG Seabor? No, 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 one. no. But you, you don't, you don't pin a multi-hash. So like you pin a CID. So what you would do is you would you would broadcast that CID that you pinned and the multi-hash for it. You wouldn't have to worry about another representation of the CID because you didn't pin that. I guess I'm confused. What do I lose by only using the multi-hash? Data structures, <laughs> like literally. Like it's the difference between data and a data structure. Because like if I if I can decode it, then I can potentially pull out links. I can like look at the semantic information. It, it, it actually just means something way different when it's a CID versus but yeah. I can just guess. You, but I can just guess. No, you can't. Once I <laughs> once I grab the block. You can't. No, no, no. You can't guess. Like that. No, no. Like you're 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 thinking C, you're thinking CIDV zero. Everything is two fifty six. Like SHA two. Everything is egg PD. But like in in like all of the the new stuff that gets about. If you're textile, if you're like these other folks, you can't just guess. Like you you really can't. All you have and, to guess is the DAG CBOR, DAG PB, get, you know, get hash. Right? DAG JSON, DAG COSE, DAG HOSE. Like we, we have three more codecs coming. People are talking about more. Not to mention like Ethereum blocks and Git blocks. And we just took all of the fucking Bitcoin blockchain and put it in as well. Like there's a lot of codecs. Um, like you really don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, like you don't know. More, more importantly, um, if you... More importantly, if you guess between Seaboard and Dag Seaboard, things go like really bad. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. They only go bad for the root block, though, right? Well, I mean, th th there is nothing but the root block if you decode it as Seaboard. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> like, that's the actual problem. Um, like, like, I mean, if you look across Filecoin, like, they may like one force them to make things CIDs um, uh, against some people's objections when it 
for a lot of identifiers in order to have a lot of this flexibility in the future. Um, and, and not just kind of future proofing, but just like having the representation mean something a little bit different and, and locking that in. And I, I really would hate to see like all of our use of the DHT get locked out of that for like, I, I, I really, I understand the optimization of not wanting to do two round trips while we're in this limbo state of migrating from CIDP zero, like that does suck. Um, but like, if you're looking to the future at all, like we really want to start thinking of these as CIDs wherever possible. Um, and, and in the case of the pins, like, like we can do it pretty efficiently without worrying about the, the performance overhead. I, I agree that it would be very problematic to change the defaults of IPFS to, to broadcast every block twice. But. I don't know. I, I guess I'm I'm not sold because it's like network internals, right? Like the ability to sniff on the DHT is like not really a supported thing, and there's no real reason to make it supported. Well, like if you look at the primary uses of DHTs other than us and other than protocol labs, like the the hashes that get put into the DHT have an agreed upon semantic understanding because they, they exist in a namespace. So like when you look something up in the BitTorrent DHT, like you know that it's going to be an info hash. And so you can you can create the data structure out of it um, and, and like get that out of it. We don't have that benefit unless it's a CID. If it's, if it's just a multi-hash, then we're just talking about binary data um, and we can't really like gain any semantic representation out of it unless it's a CID. Um, I mean, that's like, that's literally like the entire kind of point of CIDs. <laughs> but couldn't I, I mean, you're, you're sort of assuming that CID v1 is also CID v infinity. No, no, well, if you support CID v1, you support everything in the future. Like, like with CID v1, we have a, a, a version in front of the identifier, uh, in front of the identifier. So if we need to switch to v2, like we don't have to do all these changes, we're good. Don't make, don't make me mute you. Yeah, uh, we we are over time. Yeah, um, this is okay. an interesting discussion. Though. I think we should take this to a GitHub issue um, and get yeah. to the yeah. bottom of it. Um, okay. What is data anyway? To someone who doesn't know what they're <laughs> looking at. Um, cool. So thank you very much, everyone. This has been the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for the twenty seventh of July, twenty twenty. Uh, see you next week. Stay safe. Bye bye.